Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a new video. My name is Katie and I'm finally getting around to doing some more gouache videos for you. Of course if you are new here though there is a rather fabulous playlist which I highly recommend you click on at the end of this video to watch some more, well, videos of me trying different gouaches. But I'll get into that a little later on in the video. Let's talk about the one that's uh, going on screen now. It is the Giotto gouache. I picked this up when I found a fabulous little art shop in Madeira and I just could not resist. I've not seen Giotto gouache before and I think it was very cheap. I think it was less than five euros. So that's that's pretty cheap that is. And I thought, yes, we, we need to we need to do this for science. It's quite a basic set of primaries, but I do believe there are other colours in the range, but I, I obviously picked up what was available to me. And the colours that we have are a standard white, we have a primary yellow, a magenta, a cyan and an ivory black, and that is it. But hey, I've demonstrated before on this channel and especially the gouache playlist, sometimes you don't need a whole plethora of colours. After all, these should be able to mix together and you should be able to get a good range. Obviously, you've got different tones and I would say that the tones in this set are bordering a little bit more on the cooler side. However, you can still mix up some warmer tones, I reckon, with some careful colour choice. In fact, these are pretty much the same colours as I used for the Schmincke Academy gouache. So, you know, it might be limited, but it's not limited at the same time. So upon swatching these in the good old gouache book, I noticed that they were okay, actually. The texture is a little bit, it's hard to describe, but I'd say it needs to go on thick. I didn't find diluting them helped all that much. And I, I guess it was at that sweet spot for consistency to use straight away. So I guess it is literally pour and play. I'm really happy as well with how matte and opaque they dried as well. Sometimes, and again, this can range from any of the expensive to the cheaper brands. Sometimes certain colours don't have a good opacity to them. Blue tones tend to be quite guilty of that. However, I was quite happy with the cyan. You couldn't really see the paper beneath it, so that's always a good sign. So, of course, every video I've done in this series, well, specifically for this series, there has been a dragon featured, and that's that's just how we roll. And I'm still going with the celestial theme here. It is another lunar dragon because we have phases of the moon, and, you know, it just seems like a good opportunity to use those phases whilst I'm practicing with these gouaches. As per usual, I'm starting out with the background first and I mixed together a very deep purple using the magenta, the cyan and a touch of that black. And it was at this stage where I noticed something about these paints. And I'm not going to say it's a bad thing because there are options available to buy larger sets of these. However, when it came to mixing dark colours, especially with the black, and I know it's not something I usually do, but quite limited here. I felt that the coloured paints actually have perhaps just a little bit of a white base in there and it just lightened the black a little bit too much. And that kind of made it hard to judge how to use these paints. Bear in mind though that they're less than five euros, so th there's not a huge loss there. Also, I, I think they probably are aimed at children or at least very early beginners. So, you know, we can take that into consideration. I'm not gonna diss that though. Again, I think if you bought a larger color range and you've got some pre-mixed colors to play about with, I, I don't think you're gonna have any problem. The coverage was great with these. I didn't have to paint over everything twice, which is kind of nice. But I think when it comes to mixing colours, that there are, there are just a few challenges there, which had to, well, I had to sort of change my approach. Another thing, and I did mention it earlier, the consistency. I do tend to find when I mix colours up, obviously I'm going to be doing that with a slightly wet brush, and I do feel that affected how it painted with. Again, that's not a bad thing, but I, I like 
I like my materials to be relatively consistent when I'm using them and not have to put too much thought into how I'm using them. I mentioned you don't really need to add water. Now this is a personal preference, especially if you've been on this channel, you know, I like to use a mass tone when I'm using gouache. I'm not a huge fan of using it like a watercolour, except for the Shinhan Pass ones, which are just my favourite. But for me, the appeal for gouache is how flat it dries and how consistent it is. It's also, I guess it's a little bit like an animation cell, which I actually, I'm sure I heard somewhere that they did used to use gouache on the animation cells. And then once it had been captured, they'd just wash it off and then they'd draw the next frame, which I actually found quite interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm willing to explore that though. Anyway, whilst I'm painting away in the background, I suppose if you've made it this far, then I will let you know at the end of this video, there is a bit of a treat. I am just gonna quickly go through all the gouaches I've used so far because there are quite a few now. I still recommend though, if you're new here and you're enjoying this video, definitely check out the playlist. Obviously there'll be a little bit more of an in-depth investigation into these paints and my thoughts on it. And don't forget, these are just my thoughts on it. I'm not dissing anyone who uses a particular brand and maybe I don't like it, but they love it or vice versa. It's just my thought processes and my, I, I guess me using them and explaining how I feel when I'm using them. Anyway, I think I'm in danger of waffling a little bit here, so let's get back to the painting. So mixing the lighter colours was quite a sharp contrast to mixing the darker colours, which I suppose it kind of is anyway. When I applied the paint, it did dry just a little bit lighter with the colours that I'd mixed. And again, that's not a terrible thing, and I suppose really that could be down to user error and I should have done a little test swatch, but another thing I noticed about this paint was it was very hard to reactivate once it dried. And it's summer at the moment, so everything dries a little bit quicker than what I'd like it to. So I would find that when it came to using a colour that had pretty much solidified, it didn't matter how much water I threw on it, it, it did not want to come back to life, which for some gouaches that is the case, especially the Schmincke, but with other ones you can usually get them going again. But these Giotto I just found very difficult to yield any colour from there and any that I did, again, it just created that watercolour effect and that's, that's not what I'm about with this I'm afraid. But back to the original point though, yes, mixing the lighter colours it will dry just a smidgen lighter so just bear that in mind if you're using these on a piece, you might want to just do a test swatch and figure out how to preserve your paint and stop it from drying out completely. I suppose you could just spray a bit of water on it and hope for the best. One of the things I did like about these was that they layered really nicely. Um, some tend to reactivate the layers beneath, but I guess with them being the kind of gouache that goes solid like rock, I didn't find that it reactivated any layers underneath and they had a nice opacity to them as well. So that worked out really nice. Um, they're not bad to work with, if I'd be really honest with you. I wouldn't say they'd be my personal choice for all the reasons I've kind of highlighted before, but at a pinch, they're not bad. They're definitely better than the De La Roni ones that I tried a few weeks, well, about a month ago. Definitely, if, you, if you've got five euros and it's either the, the Giotto or the De La Roni simply, Giotto every time. I found the mark making pretty good with this as well. Like I say, comparing it to the Daler, that's that's going to be the lowest one so far. Comparing it to the Daler, they're quite nice to work with. The details that I put down are what I want to put down rather than having to keep going over everything again and again and again. I also found that these were quite nice to use with a rigger brush as well. And the rigger brushes I use, I either, either use the fine detail brushes and they come like in a pack of six or 12 off Amazon. They're just the cheap ones or the Royal and Langnickel rigger brushes with the clear handles. I definitely recommend them. They never let me down. But when it came to doing the details, the consistency of the paint, again, because it's pretty much ready to go. It was really nice to work with. It didn't feel like it, it was clumsy on application or anything. So yeah, I, I was quite happy for that. You know, I like to try and not only do large areas of coverage, but try and get those details in there too, just so I can let you know, you guys know how this stuff performs. God, I really feel like I'm waffling a bit here. 
And whilst I'm in a waffly mood, I might as well tell you what I've been getting up to just lately. So the lino printing really has taken over at the moment. And don't worry, I, I am still going to use other mediums and carry on with the gouache and everything. But yeah, the, the lino printing is really taking over and I will have a new video coming up soon. I've got an up crate to do first, but once that's done, I'll get a lino print up. But I also want to plan ahead for another lino print video and I think I might have a good opportunity to post an idea to you guys. So I'm going to show you all the dragons I've done so far in this series and I want to see if I can perhaps try and make a lino print equivalent of it. Obviously there's going to be some differences, it's a different technique, it's a different process, but what I'd really like you to do, if you don't mind, is check out all the dragons at the end of this video and let me know in the comments down below which one you would like to see me attempt to do a lino print of and I will do a video covering that and obviously if you guys are interested in lino printing and I guess all the problem solving on how to do things in the correct order and about a million other things that this process has let me know which dragon you would like me to demonstrate that with and I will pick the most popular one and see if I can do it. Even if it turns out as a complete failure, I still think it'll be just quite fun to try it. And if it becomes a success, then that's great and we'll have all learnt something from that. So please, I'd really like to hear what your thoughts on that would be. And obviously, if you have a favourite dragon in mind, then please let me know down below and I will make the most popular one happen. Hey, and who knows if I can make this work I might try and do all of them and then you'll have something really unique because I know quite a few of you would like to see these in prints well maybe a handmade print by me would be a nicer option than a uh, ordered on a printing site and, and I'm not knocking that or anything but I would actually like to offer something that I've made rather than I've reproduced and wouldn't that be a little bit nicer and I'm totally waffling here these are all just ideas so let's get back on to the painting that's going on right now. So yeah, I found it quite a nice paint to do the details with. I didn't find it made the brush too gloopy. It does have a certain texture to it, which is just a little different than the other gouaches I've used before, but I can't see that being a massive problem if you guys are gonna try this for yourselves or you already use it, you'll be quite familiar with it yourself anyway. I guess all in all I would recommend these but if you're still after a bargain the uh, Royal and Langnickel ones still win hands down just for value and just how much of a pleasure they were to use. Again though I would recommend buying a larger set of both of well both or either or just so you've got that colour variety rather than being restricted with what you can mix and either that's just down to the tones of the paint or I guess the the materials that the paints are made of themselves. I think you might understand what I mean there. Anyway, let's talk about the ones I've already done. So these were done with the Nicker poster colour. I guess that's what started this whole thing off. And I love these paints. I've definitely used better since, but there's just something about these that are just so nice to use. I guess you could get away with using them a little bit like a watercolour, but we're not talking Shinhan Pass quality. This one here is actually the Royal and Langnickel Dragon. And again, these were brilliant. They were such good value and they were so nice to paint with. I had no trouble at all using these. Perfect for beginners or any of you guys who are on a budget. On the opposite end of the scale, these are the Holbein Gouache. They came in an 18 set and I think they were like maybe £40. I'm not entirely sure because my husband picked these up for me on a US trip so I I'm not entirely sure. These were beautiful to paint with, they're a bit of a treat but as I've demonstrated you don't need to spend a lot of money to do a painting that you can be happy with. These were the Hobbycraft gouache and I did not enjoy painting with these all that much. The colour payoff, you really had to work hard to get a good payoff. It was doable but it was a lot of hard work and not much yield, I'm afraid. These are the De La Roni Simply paints and these were, they were, they were rubbish. They were rubbish. They were absolutely stunk. They were vile. It, didn't, it was a lot of hard work and yeah, let's just move on from that one. You, you should watch the video. I think you had to be there. However, in contrast to that though, the De La Roni 
Aquafine. It was like night and day. Honestly, these, again, they're pretty good value. I think they've gone up in price a lot since I had them, but they were really nice to work with. They were lovely to blend. They were nice and opaque and the consistency was a joy to work with. These paints, however, still are my absolute favorite to paint with and they are the Shinhan Pass gouache watercolor hybrid paints. Oh my goodness, beautiful as a watercolor, absolutely stunning as a gouache. I, I, I love these so much. I, I want to make more videos using these actually. So I guess when it cools down a bit, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Coming in at, I don't even know what number we are, but this is the Pebio Studio Gouache and these were great value. They didn't cost that much and again, very beginner friendly, very budget friendly, nice to mix, nice to paint with, lovely and opaque. That's just what you want from a gouache if you're working um, in this particular style. If you fancy a bit of an expensive treat though, we have the Schmincke Academy ones and they were really nice to work with. You do get some decent sized tubes and obviously they're your primaries. You can mix them to whatever colors you want. However, you don't have to spend a lot either. It all depends on preference. I enjoyed them though, so I can't lie. And of course, we are back to the Giotto. And again, you know what? I thought they were okay. They were all right. I, I, I wouldn't say they were terrible. I wouldn't say they were amazing. It was a nice painting experience. And I also think that has some weight to it as well. But of course, please check out the playlist which will be on screen right now that I definitely think you should click and watch if you haven't already. In the meantime, I want to say a massive thank you as always for watching and I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!